Hello, everyone, and welcome to St. Matthew's Church. As is often the case, on Wednesdays, we are exploring churches from around the world. And I found this church quite interesting when I first saw it. It's a church in Rio de, de Janeiro. Uh, it's for St. Sebastian. It's the uh, Metropolitan Church there. It's very interesting on the inside because it's mostly very dark. It's got all these dark walls, almost look like metal, but then they have these four large rectangular stained glass windows that are pointing up. You can't see right now, but that's actually a cross at the top. So it seems like everything in this building is pointing your way towards the cross, the big skylight at the top that is shedding all of its light in. It's hard to tell what's all in these stained glass windows, but it has this sort of way of feeling sort of like natural growth. It's also really interesting that there's a red carpet leading all the way in. It's like this procession of is forward and up. This kind of progression of us going towards God, forward and up towards the altar and lifted high. I really like it for that. Really strange thing though is, is in Brazil, you might know some of the, the history with Brazil, but this on the outside, this actually looks like a Mayan temple. It's It's got the sort of uh, stairway look that would go to the uh, flat platform where in Mayan culture um, would be to some other god. But in this particular case, it's redirected towards our god, the Christ. And there's no sacrifices being done the same way here. But this is about us being lifted up with God um, and not having to ascend to him, being lifted up with him, which I think is a really beautiful thing. Anyways, um, I think this is a really beautiful cathedral. I'd love to go sometime. As is also the case on Wednesday, we always go through a BCP uh, morning prayer service. Our, our readings are for this Sunday, um, but there's readings from the BCP. So you'll find those readings on page 102 or page 158. But we will start our service on page four or page 60 in the PDF. And if you don't have a BCP, there's a PDF down below. Um, just copy and paste that into your um, website, web browser. It's not over this one because you'll uh, stop the YouTube um, and you can get the text. So page four and page 60. Let's just take a moment now uh, to center ourselves on God. And then I'll start with a song and uh, move forward from there. So let's just recognize that God is with us. God is present and he is trying to speak to us now. He's with us, he's embracing us. He's holding us tight. Our first hymn for today is hymn 106. There's a voice in the wilderness crying. There's a voice in the wilderness crying, a call from the ways untrod. Prepare in the desert a highway, a highway for our God. The valley shall be exalted, the lofty hills brought low. Make straight all the crooked places where the Lord our God may go. O Zion, give voice to good tidings, ascend to the heights and sing. Proclaim to a desolate people the coming of their king. The works of pride all perish, like flowers they shall decay. The, the power and pomp of nations shall pass like a dream away. But your word, O God, is faithful. Your arm, O Lord, is strong. 
you stand in the midst of a nation and you will right the wrong. You will feed your flocks like a shepherd and fold the lambs to your breast. In pastures of peace you'll lead them and give and give to the weary rest. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God is love, and he that abideth in love abideth in God, and God in him. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Page four, page 16. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice the throne of the heavenly grace. We say together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders, Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesu our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe in his holy gospel. Wherefore we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present and the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At the top of the page. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let us see the Venite together. The bottom of that page. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are all the corners of the, her of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands repaired the dry land. O come, let us worship, and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, oh, that you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation and said, It is the people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 18, part 2, continuing from last week. So that's found on page 349 or 405. 349 or 405 in the PDF. We'll say it responsively um, after the half verse. So you'll see a little slash. And so yours is the second part of that slash. For who is God but the Lord? Or who hath any strength except our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me up on high. He teacheth my hands to fight so that mine arms can bend even a bow of steel. Though thou hast given me the defense of thy salvation, thy right hand also hath helped me up and thy loving correction hath made me great. Thou hast made room enough under me for to go, that my footsteps did not slide. I follow upon mine enemies and overtook them. Neither did I turn again till I had destroyed them. I smote them that they were not able to stand, but fell under my feet. Thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast thrown down mine enemies under me. Thou didst make mine enemies also to turn their backs upon me. And I destroyed them that they hated me that hated me. They cried, but there was none to help them. Yea, even unto the Lord did they cry, and he did not hear them. I beat them as small as the dust before the wind. I cast them out as they play in the street. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and hast made me the head of the nations. A people whom I had not known did serve me. As soon as they heard of me, they obeyed me, and strangers humbled themselves before me. The strangers lost heart, and came trembling out of their strongholds. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my strong helper, and praised be the God of my salvation. Even the God that seeth that I be avenged, and subdued the peoples under me, it is thou that deliverest me from my cruel enemies, and settest me up above mine adver adver adversaries. Thou dost rid me from the wicked man. For his cause will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the nations and sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth me unto his king, and showeth loving kindness unto his anointed, unto David, and to, unto his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So our readings for today are for the fourth Sunday in Advent. That's on page 102 or 158. First reading is taken from Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all people. The Lord is at hand. In nothing be anxious, but in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known unto God. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here ends the first reading. Our gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of St. John, the first chapter beginning at the 19th verse. This is the witness of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not. And he confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elijah? And he said, I am not. Art thou the prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? that we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou 
then if thou be not the Christ, nor, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who cometh after me, whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethany beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which takest away the sin of the world. Here ends the second reading. Let's just take a moment now to hear what God is speaking to us at this moment. It always strikes me when we get to a passage in scripture that is especially war written or violence written, where I really struggle. I question a lot of why, why was this necessary? Um, why did God allow it? And so we come to that in our Psalm today. The Psalms kind of cycle through and they're not always lined up perfectly with what would be thematically appropriate for Christmas um, because there's just a cycle. But in today, we get this passage about violence, about God empowering a David-like figure to overthrow his enemies and to establish Israel before them. There's some hints here towards wickedness and that these enemies had been persecuting um, the psalmist beforehand. And so there's already a pointing towards that what God is doing is some sort of retribution. But I still struggle with it, as I think we all do. Because we know that the perfect world is not meant for violence. We have the symbols of, of um, you know, the lion laying down with the lamb and the child playing in the adder's nest, in the snake pit. Um, and we get this idea that violence is not meant to be hurt and pain in the same way is not meant to be. And so in the perfect world, that's what we long for. And yet this world is full of hurt, is full of violence, and is full of punishment. Not always the way um, we would like, not always comforting ways, but we really know. We really know that injustice and rebellion and violence and hatred and persecution, and racism, and injustice, and all of this stuff needs to be overthrown. It needs to be destroyed. It needs to be put under the feet of God. And so just as comfortable, uh, just as uncomfortable as I am with hearing these words about violence, and tearing people down, or tearing kingdoms down, There's a part of me that thinks is, is in a weird way even thankful. It's not my place to do this violence. And I never would. But God is the judge. He is the one that knows truly what is right and what is wrong. And he will set things right. 
And we want this, we need this. We need it in ourselves and we need it in this world around us. So as much as I struggle, I know there's a place. And we must put that towards God, must trust in him to do that work because we will get it wrong as has been way too many times throughout history and throughout the history of Israel too. They have got it wrong. The God doesn't. He knows what is needed. There was a time long ago when Abraham was promised this same land. And what God says to him is the Canaanites have not reached the fullness of their sin, of their wickedness. So the land cannot be yours yet. There's this idea in which God was not willing to overthrow them until he needed to. Until there was no other way. But to redeem them through a new people. And there was people that as they conquered, became God-fearing Canaanites. Or like we hear about later in Jesus' day, the God-fearing Gentiles. And Paul's day. But I've just been talking about the song. And so we have the two readings that are leading the way towards Christmas. The first reading I would love to have way more time to pour over. I think it's a sermon unto itself um, and something we really need. But I'm just going to touch on it right here. It tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. It's a struggle sometimes to be always rejoicing. And like the people in Israel's day, when they were taken off into exile, they were asked to sing by their captors. Sing us one of those songs of Zion. And they sing in a psalm. How can we sing those songs of Zion when we're in a far off land? How can we rejoice about a place when we don't have it? Sometimes we feel that way. Sometimes we don't feel like rejoicing because we don't know what we would be rejoicing. But the truth is, is we have so much to rejoice in. Paul tells us the Lord is at hand. You have nothing to be anxious about because God is at hand. But when you do feel anxious in everything, the minute it comes up in any way, let your requests be known towards God. Turn to him and trust in him and put it on his shoulders instead of your own. Turn to him in prayer and supplication. And so ask, ask him, listen to him, pray to him beg of him but then be thankful too because in our thankfulness we already recognize that God is there in our thankfulness we recognize that God is already doing it in our thankfulness we already recognize that God is already doing things for us and blessing us and serving us and when we really know that God is close at hand, when we really know all that he's doing and can see it and be thankful for it, then we can rejoice. And then we can have that peace that comes from him alone that passes all understanding. And so, as John does, this great figure throughout scripture, John, who in some ways was Elijah. All that he does is point people towards Jesus. They keep asking him, who are you? <laughs> and the whole point is, it's not who he is. It's who Jesus is. It's who God is. He says, the point of my being here is not about me. <laughs> 
point is about making a way flat and straight and smooth for the Lord, making his way straight so that you might receive him, so that he might be received by all people and so that he might be seen. And rightfully, this whole passage ends with him seeing Jesus and saying, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John knew that he must decrease so that God would increase. And in this, as much as he yelled in the wilderness, he found peace knowing that God was at hand. He was right there to grab hold of. That he was bringing his kingdom, that he was bringing repentance. He was taking away the sin of the world and he was setting things right. He would overturn all of these people before them. That otherwise create kingdoms that were not good. And we needed God to overturn it. We still need him. But we recognize that he is already working. He's already doing this good work. And we can see him and be thankful and find that same peace. Amen. I'm going to share a video now. It was created by one of our parishioners, Eddie. He normally plays the organ on the Wednesday, but it's, we were talking about Teze, so he was going to share us a te with us a Teze song. Wait for the Lord who's days and Wait for the Lord, keep watch, take on. Wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take on. Wait for the Lord, whose day Wait for the Lord, keep watch and wait for the Lord, who stays near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. Now please join me as we turn to page 10 or page 66. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell and is seated at the He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, 
and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Raise up, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy power and come among us and with great might succor us that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are sore, let and hindered in the running the race that is set before us, thy bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit livest and reignest, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the collect of grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty, everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with the mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance and grace, to do always what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, let's just take some time of silence to be present to God with us and to offer up our prayer and supplication in thankfulness to him. Lord God, we thank you for all that you have already done in our lives. The way you have brought us safely to this day. The people you have brought in our lives that have guided and comforted us. We thank you for your presence through it all. Your love and fellowship. We thank you for this church. For the community we have here. We pray, Lord that you may guide all the processes of vaccination, the testing, and everything else that comes along with it. Please, Lord, bless all those that are in the midst of it. May it move forward safely, and may this, may our lives come back to some level of normal. But Lord, May we hold on to the learning that we have gained. May we hold on to the importance of community and the importance to care for the relationships we have. May we build strong and lasting relationships where we have built community with and for you. People might know and see you. We pray, Lord, that we might be thankful for all that we have. Thankful that you guide us through this. And as you have delivered us in these times, help us to recognize this. Help us to recognize your continual faithfulness. And so, Lord, help us not to be anxious. Help us to always be thankful. Help us to always rejoice. Help us to know that peace it is beyond understanding.
pray, Lord, for all those who have requested prayers at this time. Pray especially for Bill, Enid, June, Phyllis, Robert, David and Dorothy, Larry, Dana and Ken. In our cycle of prayer, we pray for Tom Wright and Simon, Jenna Joy and Thomas Ukash. pray for all people in this parish that in this Christmas season they might know the child that has been born to us they might know your presence the joy and potential that comes from your life your life in us amen Now, the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, I have one more song. I forgot. Hmm. So this song is Sing a New Song Unto the Lord, song 312. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing alleluia. Yahweh's people dance for joy. Oh, come before the Lord and play for him on glad tambourines and let your trumpet soar. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. Rise, O oh children, from your sleep. Your Savior now has come. He has turned your sorrows to joy and filled your soul with song. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. Glad my soul, for I have seen the glory of the Lord. The trumpet sound, the dead shall be raised. I know your Savior lives. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord singing hallelujah. God bless everyone. I hope to see you in all of our worship services and Christmas. Um, I guess I should just do a bit of a telling you what's happening tomorrow. Oh, no, sorry, tonight, uh, December 16th at 7.30 p.m. is our blue Christmas service. Um, I know it's a really important service for a lot of people, myself included. Um, that sometimes finds Christmas hard. And so it's a quiet and beautiful service about God's light coming into the darkness. So I hope you join us for that. It's gonna be a bit different because it's online, um, but if you want that link, um, please email myself or um, the office um, and we'll pass it on. 
or it's also going to be on YouTube live and saved. Um, and I'll be through it for all of our services as well. Uh, this Sunday, December 20th is our pageant at 9.30 a.m. Anyone is welcome to join, but it will be the kids acting it out. And that's online as well. And then that night, that late afternoon at 3.30 p.m. is a fundraising concert. Um, anyone's welcome to join, but we'd of course welcome your um, gifts as well because um, Marguerite and Tyler and a bunch of other musicians have been hard at work to put this all together because they know with COVID that we are a little behind and that uh, we want to be in a good place for next year. And so please come out and um, hear some of that beautiful worship. It will be on YouTube afterwards and YouTube live and on Zoom. Um, December 24th, we have three services. One will be a candlelight service that will just be on YouTube. The other two services will be at 4 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. The 4 p.m. is a family service. The 7.30 p.m. is more of an everything service. Um, and uh, the 10 p.m. is going to be online. And so you can join us for any at any time for that on YouTube. Um, and then Christmas Day is 10 a.m. It's a one service where we all gather together. And then uh, December 30th, we have a Christmas sing-along. Um, and of course, regular Chris, uh, Sunday services otherwise too. So December 30th is 7 p.m. Uh, Christmas carol sing-along. So please come in and join us for that as well. Anyways, thank you so much, everyone. God bless. Uh, I hope you feel and know God's presence in your life through these times. And you might know that peace that passes all understanding. God bless everyone.